Morning guys. Um, so over the last couple of days I um, was doing some updates to a uh, home assistant and I broke my node red instance. So for those of you that don't know what node red is, node red's a uh, drag and drop uh, JavaScript programming interface like you can um, write functional diagrams that actually do something. Um, so for me I'm using that to drag information out of MQTT on uh, Victron uh, to record when I'm producing power, when I'm not producing power and what the consumption is and whatnot. So you can see here, um, I'm going to assume that you know what MQTT is, that you've got Home Assistant or you've got independent versions of Node-RED and Influx database. If you don't, um, I'll probably post some uh, links to tutorials in the down in the description so that you know what what I'm talking about, but um, for those of you that uh, do know what it is, or you you've been reporting through MQTT, um, this is this should be relevant to you. Um, I nearly couldn't start Node Red after I did the update, um, and then I started thinking about whether or not um, I'd made a backup. Um, but then when I looked at the spaghetti mess, I've decided that well, I wouldn't really do it this way again anyway. Um, because this is a mess. So what I've decided to do is start again, but um, I don't want to repeat the mistakes I made the first time. So the first time, what I was doing is every time I had a charger, I would go ahead and um, subscribe to the topic. So these are the inverters, for example, um, and these are the DC chip. No, sorry, they're still the inverters. These are the DC chargers down here. Um, I would just add another one and copy and paste from my old ones, which means that um, if I added a new one, it would require me to make some changes. Um, and that's not ideal. I'd, I'd much prefer just to add a charger and have it appear in my reporting rather than uh, me having to go through and add everything back on. So this is what I've ended up with. Um, it's significantly tidier than it was. Um, I've got the battery sock for obvious reasons because you want to know what the state of charge is but here's the solar chargers these are the DC chargers these are the inverters so I've got AC coupled inverters uh, and there's the consumption so really these two are these are very very straightforward but these ones are the ones that um, sort of added some cleverness to so I'll show you I'll, I'll start from scratch and we'll put it together um, starting with our, our data source, right? So um, sock, DC charges, inverters, um, and then the consumption coming out of the, uh, the Victor inverter itself. So the first one we've got is really, really straightforward. I'll grab these comments while we're going and then I'll explain what each of them do. Right. So the sock is really, really simple. This is, um, as the sock gets published to this topic, so if I jump into my um, oh, I've got to send the keep alive message. Now, if I just disconnect and reconnect, it'll come back. Oh, wait. There is a message you've got to send. I think, I think it's to that. I can't remember. Let me have a look. You just send zero, I think. Yeah, there it goes. So we're going to have to implement that message, which I haven't done yet, but I will. So let's have a look. We've got system zero DC battery sock. System um, zero DC battery. And then state of charge would be right there. So every time that this message gets broadcast or published to this topic, um, we're just grabbing a copy of the value and we're putting it in a global context uh, with, with a variable name of sock. So pretty straightforward. Um, shit done. That's all that one does, right? And I'll explain why in a minute. Why you, you might be asking why isn't that actually going into the Influx database? Well, I'll, I'll explain uh, shortly. Uh, grab these. These are the ones here that... Oh, hang on. I can't copy and paste off that screen. I'm going to copy and paste off this one. These are the ones where I've implemented a little bit more intelligence this time than I did last time. The first one obviously grabs the DC solar charging uh, statistics and the second one grabs the PV inverter. I'm going to open this up 
and sort of give a little brief explanation of what's going on here. Um, with the solar charges on here, um, where are the solar charges? There they are. The topic that I don't like for, let's say, this is one of the CAN bus charges, for example. Not all of the details in the topic are updating all at once. Only one or two details are updating at a time, right? So like there, the voltage is changing. Um, and I bet you the yield is changing every time the, the voltage changes. Oh, there you go. Look, the voltage didn't change, but the yield did. So that means that you've got to sort through this and understand, uh, like if you want to collate information and, and do calculations, and we are doing a calculation here because PV has a voltage, doesn't have current. Um, current's important to me because if I expand the size of an array and it looks like I'm going to need to increase the size of my cabling, then I want to know what the current is and I don't want to have to think about it. So what I could do is take the power, divide it by the voltage, and I'd get the current from the PV, right? But because these messages come out independent of one another, I've got to store them somewhere um, to do the comparison, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, so firstly we start with the topic because the first thing we need to do is break down this this detail so if I copy and paste this and I'll put it in here as a comment that's what the topic looks like and it's delineated by these slashes like um, like a Linux file system or like an old DOS file system with the slashes going the wrong way um, so we break the topic up into its individual components and this becomes an array so the first element in the array will be nine or oh, n sorry and then it'll be the number of the servo controller solar charges zero pv and v in this case i mean i'm actually stopping it like there anyway um so after we've broken up the topic um we grab a variable from the global context called charge source array Right now, it's only called array because I expect this to be an array. So nothing to do with solar arrays, um, but it's a list of charge sources. If charge sources is undefined because you've just started up node red, then it creates an empty array. Um, that's really straightforward because obviously the data doesn't exist when node red first starts up, or you've restarted the flows. You might actually, I think, I think global context when you press deploy is. Uh, is consistent between restarts. Um, the next thing we need to do is figure out a unique ID for each of the MPPTs or the charge sources in this case. So this is where MPPT ID equals, and I'm appending MPPT ID to it, um, with topic detail three is effectively the number that comes after your socket was zero. That would be the first um, charger on the CAN bus. In my case, 277 is the first charger on the VE bus. 279 is the last charger on the VE bus. So we're using that as a known point to state which charger is which. Um, I'm creating an empty variable here for MPPT. Um, then we're going to sift through the array, looking for... Uh, whether or not there's a charge source that's in the array that already that, that matches our MPPT ID. Now, if it doesn't, we add it. Right. So, excellent. If MPPT ended up, um, if there was a copy of MPPT in the array, that's great. We'll take that copy out. We'll make changes to it, and then we'll recommit it later. Um, but if it doesn't exist, we have to create it. So, that's what's going on there. Um, the next one is topic detail. Now, this DC bit here, you'll, this will make sense soon because I've got AC coupled charges here. I've done a little bit of uh, like error sort of handling there to, to determine what type of a device this MPPT is, right? So if I pull this over, you'll see what the object looks like. So we've got the name, um, the device type, manufacturer model. Now, name is the custom name that if you've given your MPPT a name in the servo controller, this will get populated, otherwise the string will stay null. Um, device type, manufacturer model, uh, battery voltage, battery current, solar voltage, yield. Now you'll notice there is no solar current there. We calculate the solar current later. Um, and then I've got some other fields here that I was using to calculate um, watt hours and they're, they're effectively not being used at the moment I'm, I was gonna 
I was going to work on that, but now I've decided not to. It um, seems like it's a bit of a waste of time. I can just do that in the Grafana, so it's not an issue. Um, anyway, we if we've got a, if we've just received a message and the topic has DC in it um, as a bit of error handling, we will check and see if it's got current. And if it's got current, the only time that one of these things ever says uh, current, I've got to publish a message. Bring this back. So solar charge is zero. I'll use, come on, when you settle down, DC zero, there we go, current and voltage, these are both to the battery side, so look for DC, found DC, yep, alright, so we're looking at current that belongs to the battery and we're looking at voltage that belongs to the battery. You can see if we just look for voltage, also when we get uh, solar coming out, or the PV, that's just got V, so I suppose you could figure it out that way as well, but. Anyway, I feel better that I've got some error handling in there. Um, we're going to set battery current um, for if if the topic had current as a part of its um, structure, or if it had voltage, we'll set the battery voltage as a part of the structure. Um, same thing with the PV. Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're writing them one at a time to an object that isn't committed to the um, influx database yet. Uh, and, and we'll commit it once we've populated all the fields. So come down to yield again. So again, that's just a little bit of um, error handling that, and I think it's actually the next element up. So PV yield, and then we want power. So realistically, I could have just said if topic four is equal to equal to yield and and uh, if topic detail 5 is equal equal to power, I didn't need to have multiple list statements, but that's what I've done. Um, going down to the next one, we're now looking for the devices. So this is all about the product name and the, and the custom name, if they're set. So we should be able to see it here, devices, zero custom name. Now I've just thrown a random name in there, so it doesn't mean anything. It's just one of the larger of the, two, of the three charges. Um, and then there's the product name there. Um, we keep on coming down and then so we've by this stage if we've had one of each of these messages um, we would have a fully populated uh, message to send to influx database um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to look for this thing in the list and we need to update it in the array and then we want to save that array back to the global context again with the updated details inside of it and then this is where we do the check so if our battery current is not equal to zero, battery voltage is not equal to zero, solar voltage and yield are all not equal to zero, and the MPV type is not equal to zero, then we can send a message. Else, we're going to send blank. Uh, now, this causes it to throw about 30 errors when it first starts up because um, Influx will get this payload and not know what to do with it. Um, that's not an issue. It doesn't take long for it to correct itself it will send the message as soon as all of these items are populated. So, same thing for the AC power sources. And the, I could have made this a single function, but it would have made it a really big function if I had done that. And I'd prefer for it to be readable, readable for people. So similar thing, except that this time, we're not looking for charge sources, we're looking for AC sources. Um, there's a few things that are different, uh, like we get yield, um, we get inverter current and inverter voltage, but these are both AC readings, not DC readings. And again, I was going to, I was going to do what hours, but I never ended up doing it. Um, same as before, we're looking for PV inverter and then in, uh, then AC coupled as the, and we set AC coupled as the device type because we know that it's a PV inverter. We look for the topic detail for AC before we get power, current, and voltage. Um, and then again, custom name, product name, and then we update it in the array, um, set the array back in the global, con we'll make a copy of the array back to the global context again, look to see that our messages have been populated, which they have, or the, the message details have been populated, or send blank. Right. So the, the outcome of that is, if I add another charger, and if I... Shrink this down, you've got 0, 277, 279, and then there's five AC coupled inverters that are talking at the moment. If I added a new one, I don't have to go and add another one of these boxes and another function. Like I 
had done previously when we did maximum power consumes, you end up with this spaghetti mess. So I'm trying to avoid that. So let's finish one out. So as it stands right now, if I add another DC charger, it will just appear. Um, if I add another AC coupled inverter, it will also just appear in my in my Grafana. Um, the next thing is formatting it and tagging it correctly for use in influx DB. So I split this out just to keep the functions as um, small as I could, so that if other people wanted to read them and make changes, they could. So the first one is, um, if it is undefined, um, if battery current is undefined, we must have an AC inverter. Um, however, if battery current is defined, then we have a DC charger. So we'll format the message. These are the um, uh, these are the values that, are, or these are the fields that get sent into Influx database, and these are the tags. So we can sort these different various fields via these tags say we only wanted dc charges so uh, where is the device type there it is say we want to know the difference between our ac coupled solar output and our dc coupled solar output or we could say hey i only want to see the mppts where down here i could say hey i only want to see the ac inverters um, and then we would only see these fields in influx coming out of the um out of one type or the other so um these one, this here is the message that goes into influx um, for the AC coupled inverters and this one here is the data that goes into influx that comes from the MPPTs. Right, so fairly straightforward. Um, we're, now we've got, to get, got something funky going on just down in the next bit because I'm not a Grafana expert or an influx expert for that matter so what I've done instead is I totaled um, the the total output the DC output and the AC output before it went to influx um, that way I don't have to deal with any of the wacky queries right so um, I get both the arrays that are being written to the global context um, by the other two functions above um, I sift through them pull out all the DC values and total them up to a single DC value, total up all the ACs to a single AC value, and then uh, format a message. Um, you can see here that actually that should be commented out, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch it now, it's working. Um, total outputs there, total AC and total DC, and then I'm sending the total, all three totals, um, to a uh, field called total production in, in Influx. Um, lazy way to do it, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm no influx or Grafana expert, so I'm going to change this to YouTube because we're going to have to go through the process of um, uh, creating an influx database shortly. And then we've got the consumption. This is the last one. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Comment over already. All right. Um, same thing again as the battery sock, um, only we're forwarding it on directly this time. Um, so. We write the sock to the global context. Sorry, no, we're actually getting the sock. So bear in mind at the top, this didn't go anywhere. Um, so what we're doing is with the consumption, we're also writing in the sock at the same time. So we get the sock from the global context, unless it's not set, which is quite possible when node reds just restarted, um, it will be undefined. So we set sock to zero. Um, we create a return message. And the reason that we're creating a return message rather than using the existing variable message is that um, if you wanted to run some logic on it, this is just a habit that I've built up over time, if you wanted to run some logic against message somewhere in your function, then you essentially need to make a copy of it. So I've always just created a new variable called rent message, and that's the message I'm going to return while I work on you know detail within the other message value. That's You don't have to do that. That's, that's just a bad habit that I've developed. Um, 
in any event, we the payload values are the total consumption coming out of the inverter um, as well as the stock at the same time, and then I've just put the field as household consumption, um, and it's from the Victron Quattro. I just had to put something there, so that's what I've got. Um, all right, so what do we got here? We got did I name that incorrectly? I did. That should be total consumption. And that should be major. Ooh, glad I spotted that. That would have made this mighty awkward. Alright. There's the errors because, oh well, I mean this error is because the, the YouTube database doesn't exist because we haven't created it yet. That's okay. Alright, what we've got, to, what we are going to have to do is build this keep alive. Let's do that quickly because um, that's going to be important. Whenever we Pretty sure it doesn't matter what detail goes into the keeper life. Um, but, uh, message dot. Why am I doing that? I could just copy and paste it. That's going to be our topic. Absolutely certain it could just be zero, but let's go with and like that. All right, uh, I'll rename that to. I'm not sure why, but the servo controller, unless you broadcast to this topic, the servo controller just randomly drops drops off. Um, I'm sure it's in the documentation somewhere. I don't know why it exists, but um, I always just pop that in. If this one produces a message, then it'll send a message to Solar Charge Zero. So once you start up and you subscribe, it'll produce messages anyway. The second it does, it'll broadcast a message to here, causing it to produce all these messages. I'm not sure. I really have no idea why that is, why it is. But anyway, let's um, look at our influx database and create a new one called YouTube. Okay, and we're going to add a retention policy, retention policy one, which is what we've got. I'm just going to make it one day because this is a temporary, this is a temporary thing. Let's clear my errors here. See, we've still got still producing errors. And deploy uh, oh, I've used a capital on some of those haven't I? that was a bit silly Float field for solar current infinity. Um, oh, that's what I didn't talk about there. We're doing that math somewhere here, aren't we? So there it is. Message payload yield um, is divided by solar voltage, gives you the solar current. I'll come back to this in a second um, because yeah, something's not going. Something's not going right there. So what we'll do is just quickly this purpose of error checking. We're just going to set solar current to zero. Good, good. No errors. Okay. We go over our influx database. We should see a new one called YouTube. Now we've got power production. So we can select by device type. Let's start with the MPPTs. And we'll say we want solar yield. Alright, that's our current... Um, that's our current yield, it's not great, it's first thing in the morning. Um, so we are where the device type is grouped by. Alright, 
there we go. So obviously some clouds have come over. The large 150 was outperforming the large 250, and then we've got a little baby um, 150 by 45 that's only producing 43 watts. That's a bit dismal, isn't it? Let's say we want AC coupled and DC coupled, and now we've got all these different charge sources. Um, make a new query. Let's go total consumption. How much pairs is the house using at the moment? So we don't actually need to select the Victron Quattro because it's the only one that's there. Um, this will make sense later on when you realise that I've got heaps of crap around here and I've got more than one inverter. So total consumption at the moment. What are we peaking at? 1.7 kilowatts. We're down around 1.63 at the moment. Um, power, so we've done total power production. So let's go total AC at the moment. That is not doing well, is it? 728. What's that total DC doing? Where are we at? Oh, we're not doing too much better with that either. Oh, we've got total. 7.1.44 oh, kilowatts. That is dismal, isn't it? Alright, let's go and have a look what that looks like when we put it into Grafana. Um, that is create a new dashboard. Empty dashboard. Um, what do we start with? You know what we do need? Um, we need to set it as a data source. Discard. Uh, I was already did a little test of this before. Oh, what have we done? Don't want that full, full screen. Um, why did I set that username and password to? I think it was. I can't remember what I used. Oh, that works. Good. Okay. Uh, manage and new dashboard. Right. Select the data source. Retention policy one. Um, let's start with the most impressive one, I think, is the yield. Mean linear. But we want to group by time interval first and then so then we get all of our different power producers they're all populating across so let's go uh, power reduction if I spell that correctly by device whatever, whatever. Sure, somebody OCD is going to be upset about that, but that's okay. Uh, let's set an auto refresh and save that. Yep. Um, that will do. Uh, we've got an auto refresh. Let's set it for one hour so that we can actually see the detail that's coming in. Then we will duplicate it. And we will turn it into a pie graph. Right, so you can see now what we really want to do is to understand what that actually means, because it's given the context it doesn't really mean much. We'll put a gauge in. RP um, no, wrong database. Total power production. Field is we want the total. Um, we don't need to fill it. Uh, and we'll call it production. Yeah, cool. Uh, fields. We could change the colours around here. I might say that. Um, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I reckon anything above eighteen kilowatts. For me is trouble. Um, that's getting to oh, what have we done? And then I'm happy below sixteen kilowatts. We're green. Fourteen, and then we start to go back the other way. So I'd say that under five thousand. Is a problem under uh, 2500 is we're not actually making 
any power whatsoever. The maximum you can set it to 20 kilowatts and the minimum can be zero. All right, so not charging down the bottom here. We're good in the middle. Um, Let's change that one. Red there. So I'll add another threshold. We'll say 6,000 is also green. That's really green just there. There we go. That's our sweet spot. That's where we're making power. Um, what kilowatts? Yeah. Oh, I don't want megawatts. Bloody hell. Watts. There we go. Now yeah, we've got an idea of um, how much power we're producing, and then we'll go. The really important one, I suppose, is what's our consumption? Total consumption. Um, now, this is the opposite way around. To our other one. So we want um, <clears throat> red is going to be five thousand. Um, we'll say eight thousand can be extreme, hey? The most red. Yellow four thousand. I want green to be like. 1,000, so minimum is zero, maximum, let's call it 10,000, so pretty good. I'll do a light green for 3,500, not 35,000. There we go, and we're going to call the panel total. Um, I suppose really the only thing we're missing here is the um, state of charge. I'm going to add one of those too. YouTube, we'll take it from RP1. Um, now, where did I put that total consumption? I think it was. Yep, there it is. State of charge. Ah, this is, a, this is an interesting opportunity. So we've got the state of charge there. Um, we could probably marry that up. Well, I'll do that. I'll do this later. But what I'm thinking is that the state of charge, based on um, if we put it as a right-hand axis, um, and on the left we have um, consumption versus production, would be an interesting. That would be an interesting uh, gauge to have. I think um, max is 100. Minimum is zero, and we want it the other way around. So that is 15% is low, 25, and we'll say that light green is 60. Um, that can be 50, and then solid green above 90. Um, oh, that should do it, I think. Oh, I better give it a title. State of charge. doing so <clears throat> going back to the original point of the video um, if I added if I went out now and added another charger it would just appear here as soon as it starts to commit um, like 
participate in the uh, in the network of charges, it would just start to broadcast it. The servo controller would start to broadcast messages from it. Um, the influx database would begin to receive them from Node Red as soon as it's populated all the fields. So I would just I would just start seeing another charger show up here. Um, and that is a lot better than what I have had because I would have to statically go in and copy and paste functions and uh, manually intervene. Um, and that's that's not ideal. So hopefully that's a cleaner way to do it. I'll, um, I'll share this. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to share it, but I'll put a link into the, uh, into the description of the video so that everybody can see what it is that uh, I was hoping to achieve. Anyway, thanks for watching.